Are you ready for the Toilet Paper Diaries, Season 2? Wonderful. You know, I would wear a customized mask. I would probably get one made that looks exactly like my face. Just here, that bit here. So when I'm talking to people, my lips wouldn't move and I would freak them out. That's my plan. Yeah. You know, my um, my friends that own the uh, Keys Lounge in uh, Mexico, uh, they have designed some really nice visors that look exactly like if you will be, your face will be painted like uh, one of the four uh, players in Kiss. And uh, I think that's also very cool. So, I, I mean, some people are against wearing the mask. Some people are uh, completely pro wearing the mask. And uh, what a few weeks ago was, uh, you know, I mean, uh, oh, well, you know, that's a new kind of thing. Right now it has become an incredibly controversial issue. And it's insane. <laughs> it's just, I don't get it. I don't get what part of... If you don't wear a mask, you could die. People don't seem to understand. Um, but that's it just seems to be a thing. I mean, politicizing it, let's stay away from that for obvious reasons. But right now, the world is, is in is upside down. And the one thing that you can guarantee is if you wear a mask and you social distance and wear rubber gloves, there's less chance of you catching something. That's it. That's the only thing we have. And so I know it's driving people crazy. Some people just go and bonkers about it. I mean, uh, I know that we were talking earlier about, uh, um, I mean, I'm glad we have camera phones so we can share stuff on the internet because right now everybody who's going potty for some reason feels a need to put it live on Facebook. It is the uh, phenomenon of the Karen. Have you, are you familiar with that, the Karen? <laughs> I am very aware of the Karen. Oh I think God. I'll let you explain it. You explain what a Karen is. First of all, I do not know why is that physical appearance, because obviously, I mean, we're always saying, well, you know, we're not going to be criticizing physical appearance, but it is a white lady that has this sort of bob hairstyle. And uh, that basically is just uh, making an issue with uh, either shop owner or with, uh, you know, somebody. I mean, it could be a driver. It could be anything. And it just videos of Karens have been just popping up every single day in social media. Right now, if you... Uh, just look at uh, either Facebook or Instagram or anything like that. You're going to see a ton of videos and a lot of memes about carrots. It's all about privilege, really, isn't it? It's ultimately all about the fact that um, somebody wants to push their agenda or they feel really upset if somebody asks them for a compromise. And so that jars so much with people around the world because right now, compromise is everything. You know, if you're walking towards somebody and you want to you know, have social distancing, one of you or both of you will move to go around, so therefore you can keep your social distance. You don't stay in the same way and make them move if there's no room for anyone to go. And so the empathy that we should be feeling for each other, quite clearly Karens don't. And uh, so whether it's um, calling the police on, on, on anybody of color or whatever it is, or kicking off because they don't like the masks, it's just an incredible thing. Now there's a video all about that. Should we share that with everybody? to this shit all my fucking life. So, uh, Target? I'm not playing anymore for the game. This shit's fucking over. This shit's all fucking over. This shit's fucking over. This shit's over, 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 this shit's over. This anymore. This is over. No. Uh -uh. No. Do you? Why? Why? You let everybody else do it? You let everybody else do it? Why can't do it? Because I'm a blonde white woman? Fucking wearing a fucking forty thousand dollar fucking Rolex. I don't have the fucking right to fix it up. I'm fucking. They did everything that Donald Trump was elected to do. You can read about it on Twitter. You can read about it in the news. 
all of the all of the deep state politicians, all of that stuff has happened. It's done. Okay. So I was hired to be the, the QAnon so spokesperson. Is coming here today. I cannot. It's a secret. What do you mean? Like I, I can't give you any classified information. You're not. Uh, uh, you're, uh, not uh, you're, you're not. You're not. You don't have parents. You don't have parents. Okay. You don't. You're, you're a spokesperson. Yeah. Correct? For the for the for the White House. Yeah. Okay. But I call Donald Trump and ask him if you, if you don't believe me. Do you like, have his phone number? Do I have his phone number? I'm on the phone with him all the time. I'm fucking wired. Okay. I think we have enough here. Okay. Right. Can you put down your phone? Now? No, I'm not going to put down my phone. Like I said, I'm wired. Okay. All this is being broadcast live. It is. Yeah. Okay. Where is it being broadcast? Everywhere, all over the world. All over the world. All over the world on Instagram. Yeah. Millions of viewers. Okay. So say cheese. You're on candy camera. Okay, thank you. CBI or 1039? CBI. Okay. Well, listen, I'm going to have you spin around and just put your phone down. What? First, okay. I need you to put your phone down. Oh, my God. I'm sorry. Great. Well, we have to apologize for all the profanity and bad words on there. We don't normally carry that much swearing, but there's no other way of showing that without highlighting the exact crazy situation. And... I've got a feel for the police. The damned if they do, damned if they don't. Whatever they do in that situation is going to be broadcast. And you can hear the guy saying sorry as he's arresting the woman. I wish that we would have just moved into fast forward and we will just be training people and giving people as much as we can. But right now, we have to come back to this situation because, again, we are in a mess, in a complete mess. And to make things worse, did you see that in China uh, that they already found some uh, with a bubonic plague? What? Yeah. <laughs> what? Apparently now the bubonic plague is already hitting China. So, I mean, 2020 is a year that keeps on giving. No matter how you say it, it just keeps on giving. Rewind that. <laughs> Rewind. Did you just say bubonic plague? Like a thousand years ago, bubonic plague. Like Tower of London time, bubonic plague. Like Ring of Ring of Roses, bubonic plague. Exactly. <laughs> It's like somebody, it's like some kid's got a chemistry set that somebody bought them saying fatal diseases. Oh, let's mix this one together. What have we got? Oh, bubonic plague. That's nice. Check it out the window. Let's see how it connects with everybody. Here's the thing. If you're enjoying the show, we love to have you with us. If you're worried about the world out there, then we love to have you with us as well because it's funny, but it's not really funny. And mm. what Ernesto and I want to do is, 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 share with you how crazy the world is i don't know if did you get that picture of the of the beach thousands and thousands of big, uh, people on the beach right now in um can you see it there yeah, look at that craziness and and then on top of that i mean they were parties i mean and i have to say because i i uh we also here in, in the fourth of july we had a very nice time our neighbors invited us there they had a, a crawfish uh, cook, uh, cook out. It was fantastic. They had about 30 pounds of uh, crawfish. It was only us, the two of them, the two of us and my kids. We were socially distancing. Uh, everybody bought their own drinks so that we didn't have to exchange drinks. We were sitting outside in the garage, uh, in the street. Uh, we were very respectful and we had a very nice time and it was really very nice. And then in the evening, we went to the, to the fireworks. Uh, here you can see some, uh, uh, to see the fireworks Beautiful. and that uh, you can see everybody was wearing masks and uh, everything was it, everything was really perfect i mean there was no issues of everybody getting upset let me just show you a little bit of the um uh, of the footage of the of the fireworks so that you can see how actually it was structured Well, I mean, it was, it was, I have to say that it was very nicely organized. Everybody was uh, keeping their distance. Everybody was following the procedures and everybody was happy. But, and, uh, but then on the other hand, I mean, you go into social media and you go to see what's going on and you go crazy. I mean, the, the last thing that, uh, that we had on our 4th of July um, weekend, which I really liked, uh, it was that Disney Plus started showing Hamilton. And uh, Hamilton was uh, first of all, if uh, if you do not if you are not American and you do not know who Alexander Hamilton is before you see the show, 
make sure to actually watch a documentary about it because if not, it's going to be very difficult to follow. Now, also add that into the fact that uh, English is not my first language. Trying to understand every single thing that was being said with the uh, rap and hip hop, it was even more difficult. But now, as, as soon as I got into the group, I thought it was great. I mean, we suddenly started seeing what it was happening there. And in one of the interviews with this guy, uh, Lin Manuel Miranda, the uh, the guy that plays Hamilton and the guy that actually wrote the whole thing, he was saying that he basically took a situation of how things are right now and took it to uh, to the time of 1776 on the on the independence. It was so nice to see uh, uh, President Washington being black and uh, most of the people in the cast being uh, either brown, black, Asian, Hispanic, and they were just a few white. Just to... why that turnaround? I don't understand. I've not seen the movie yet. Why? No, it's not a movie. People. It's actually it's actually a play. Well, the thing is, you know, this is exactly how our world looks like right now. And what he did is he basically casted everybody and put it into into what is happening right now into 1776, so that you can see the similarities of what has happened in the past. So I have to say that this weekend was very, very interesting because I learned from all sorts of things. I mean, you, you say, well, you know, people that be together and uh, hang out together and follow the rules, uh, you know, history uh, put into perspective with a different point of view that will actually help uh, heal the world. Uh, we had a very nice uh, get together with my neighbors. And then in the other side, you, you still see that there's a lot of things brewing uh, into the world. And the, this insanity is, uh, is one of those things that needs to be addressed. And that's why, uh, Dave, I think uh, your experience and your expertise, it's just absolutely critical. And possibly you can explain why we are doing um, this, uh, this show. And by the way, I mean, if you are uh, with us, we would like to hear, hear your, uh, your comments. I mean, we're, we're seeing here, <laughs> Sydney wants to marry the lady in Target. <laughs> I do not know why. <laughs> Don't bring a mask. Don't bring a mask. Yeah. Brett is saying, love seeing the uh, socially distanced fireworks. Yeah, it was very nice. It was absolutely it was absolutely fantastic. Every firework should be socially distanced because if it's not far away, it's going to hurt you. <laughs> There's a thing about fireworks as well. Have you noticed that? Maybe, maybe it's just me. When you, you see a firework exploding, it just looks like a coronavirus spore. It just looks like explosions and celebrations. It's Maybe it's just me. All right, so if you're worried about the world and the lockdown and you're finding it really hard to think about your personal safety, your loved ones, your career, your, your where, where you're going to earn from and all the rest of it, you're not alone. There's 4 billion people at least in lockdown around the planet who are in the same position going, what's just happened and where do things come from? The good thing is to look at is, first of all, we've been through this kind of before, for four months, and we know we can get through it. There's still going to be stuff in the shops. There's still going to be ways of moving forward. But the challenge is, what do we do inside our heads? How do we reinvent ourselves? How do we keep ourselves in a position where we can deal with it? There's a very good chance that we're going to get a second wave. There's a very good chance that with a second wave, and in fact, in many places, we're going back into quarantine, then you're going to have to experience everything again. Older and wiser, but possibly with less finances and less patience. So what today's episode is about is being able to, to explain why we have this experience, why you're feeling what you are feeling, and some ways that you can feel better. And the episode we're doing, on, that's part one. The episode we're doing on Wednesday of the Toilet Paper Diaries will be about the solutions to help you get over it and be able to, to thrive and survive better um, with all the different challenges that are around. So some people do better than others. This is really about an issue of mental health, which is seen by many people as a second pandemic that's going to come. But mind you, Ernesto has just hijacked that by saying a bubonic plague. Beat it to get out here. But mental health has got to be a real challenge for every single person because even if you're doing all right you're kind of coping but you know that you can have days when you don't feel so good so what's causing it what's actually making such an issue what's making so difficult i mean i think ernesto one of the things is i will mention this in a later video we were very lucky in the fact that we got ourselves busy on the show we've been able to throw ourselves into the show and so it distracted us many ways from having to think about other stuff not necessarily that it was earning money but just because we could then see days go by faster. Did you feel it was the same for you? 
Oh, absolutely, 100%. I, I think uh, that was the therapy that uh, many other people haven't had. I mean, I, I consider it also incredibly important because through the time that we were in lockdown, I was also talking on a daily basis with my mom and my brother and sister were also very, very careful in, in uh, talking to her all the time because she's there by herself. And uh, I mean, we have seen how difficult it has been to actually keep her, uh, you know, motivated. I mean, she she's she has an incredible, uh, an incredible wish to to be motivated, and uh, she's been doing everything. But I can understand that this wears people out, and uh, it has been wearing people out. And you know, people are right now reacting in different ways. And I believe that this story with the Karens. And uh, all these, uh, uh, you, you know, it's 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 that tension, that uh, feeling which has already been popped inside of people. And what's going to happen is it's going to pop out. I mean, we cannot help it, but it's going to pop out. So we're going to go. Absolutely, I completely agree with you. We're going to explore mindsets and explore the world we've been led to believe is the one we should be in. And what happens when that world changes and you're not left with a lifeline about how to deal with it? Have you ever been hypnotized by anybody in the past or uh, any ex any experience with hypnosis? That's a question to you. I don't think I've actually hypnotized you, have I? No, you have not. But I have seen you. I have seen you doing hypnosis uh, for a while. And I, of course, understand a lot the uh, the social hypnosis of what's ha what happens. And uh, so it is uh, uh, it is fascinating. Well, I've been a hypnotist for about 20 years, and with that, I've done stage shows all around the world. I've been a practicing hypnotherapist to help people with a lot of different things, uh, to stop smoking, lose weight, deal with childhood issues, deal with stress, be able to um, feel more confident in life, be better at public speaking. There's a ton of uses for hypnosis, not just for comedy stuff. Now, a lot of people will turn around and say, well, you know, it's made up. It's mumbo jumbo. I promise you it's not. One of the things is I don't tell lies. I don't tell. Why don't I tell lies? And you might think this is a lie, but I don't tell a lie because you've got to do about 15 lies for each lie and then another 15 for each 15. And I couldn't keep on top of it. I only do stuff I can practice and put into actual use. So here's a diagram to share with you about how your mind works. So I, I created this as um, literally the, the hypnosis model. So if you imagine that squiggly line where it says conscious mind above and below it says unconscious mind, that is like Titanic, you know, the iceberg with the water. So above the surface is your conscious mind. That's a bit you're thinking with right now. You've got your willpower, short-term memory, your critical abilities, and your logical decision-making. Below the surface is where it gets really interesting. In there, your belief systems, your habits, long-term memory, protective factor that keeps you safe, your senses, your imagination, your values, and your emotions are below the surface. You don't normally interact with them. They just happen to you, and you go, oh, my goodness, something's just happened. In the square, you've got unconscious mind. That's your beauty sleep. That's how many times your heart beats, how many times you blink, when your skin sheds and new skin grows. And then outside of that, you see the superconscious mind, and that's your link to all things through prayer and the secret. If you can look at that when you're in hypnosis, what happens is that triangle turns upside down. Your conscious mind goes to the bottom, so you're not conscious of much at all, but the rest of your stuff, imagination and beliefs and values and everything, goes above the surface. So the triangle's like that. As a hypnotist, when I'm doing comedy hypnosis, people's, people become very suggestible because their conscious mind is not really in charge, but all the rest of their stuff, a really cool imagination, all the rest of it is available. So when it comes to programming somebody to stop smoking, losing weight, and all the rest of it, you've got to use, use hypnosis to get through the water into their subconscious mind and change their relationship with their long-term memory and their experience and their emotions and their belief systems and their habits. Once you change their relationship with something, they let it go and they can move forward. That's basically hypnosis. A lot of it is regression and going back to tap into your memories. So that hopefully will explain quite a lot of it. So when do you start getting hypnotized? You're hypnotized all the time. We're in hypnosis now, even watching this show. There are a lot of people watching it and you wouldn't believe, oh my goodness, we've been going for 38 minutes so far. Well, about that. That's simply because you lose track of time when you're in a deep hypnosis state. And from the age of seven is when things change. Well, up to the age of seven, you live in your own little world. You believe everything around you. Then you get to the age of seven, and it's like a lid being put on top of your belief system. From that point on, you start realizing that adults are not gods. They're just grown-ups. And you start realizing the world isn't quite fair the way that you expected it to be when you were a child. And sometimes you don't get what you want. 
And all the time as a parent, after the age of seven, you're constantly trying to put stuff on top of, that helps guide your children to where they need to be. Now, this is important because if you want to change anything that you have a relationship to, then the way that you are right now was formed years ago before the age of seven, before you were able to decide what was happening to you, it got locked in. So you have to go back to that, it's called the initial sensitizing event, and change your relationship to it. So that's a basic idea about how it works. I think we can show exactly what it works like in comedy hypnosis. Now, we're going to show you a clip in a moment of me being on stage with a group of people. I've got an audience of about 500 people at the Madinat Theatre. It's going back a few years. I look naturally blonde, and you'll see. But what I'm doing is I've got a lot of people in hypnosis, and when I suggest to them to do something, they do exactly what I say. Now, this program is important. When you understand how programming works, you'll understand part of why we're so challenged right now. <laughs> But yeah, that, that really happens. And um, what, what happens right now, the people are stuck in lockdown, the people are scared, the people are worried about what's going on next. It's related to that. It's related to the world that you create around you and the difference in it. Now, you're probably worried and thinking, right, is that true? Is it not true? Is that made up? What's at the heart of hypnosis? And we'd love to have your comments here, by the way. Feel free to share it. And uh, we'd love to know what you're thinking as this goes along. Ernesto, in terms of hypnosis, you know about NLP, which is like the business end of hypnosis, and you use it in your training to help people to be more effective when you coach them. It helps to bypass the ways that they'd resist, and it gets them to be more effective at what they do. Yeah, I can, I can definitely see it, and that is one of the, one of the things that uh, it, are, it is happening right now. I mean, the, the hypnosis in which people have gone through right now, I mean, and that's actually one of the questions that I wanted to ask you, because... Uh, 
I been having the intention, and I have actually mentioned it a couple of times, you know what, I want to to talk a little bit about uh, conspiracy theories in uh, in this show. And we have always been very skeptical about talking about that. And uh, you're going to say, well, why are you talking about it right now? <laughs> but don't worry, I'm not going to actually go and, and, and build on the whole thing. But what happens is, this is my observation, when people go into this level of self-hypnosis and they start uh, finding that they don't have any certainty. I mean, th that, that certainty is not really within people. They start finding certainty in things that uh, they are relatively easy to prove. And that's why the conspiracy theories actually happen. So what is your experience? This is my question. This is wh what is your experience in, um, in, in this situation? I mean, the people which are more easily persuaded in, in uh, hypnosis, I'm sure that you get this question all the time. What is actually what will make people fall into, into hypnosis easier? Fascinating question. It's about being suggestible and susceptible to hypnosis. And the people who are best at doing it are people who are great at taking orders. People who are great at concentrating. People who are very smart. People who don't question anything, but they just take it on board. They are your best subjects. So when you're starting a show, when you invite people up from the audience, you do a number of different tests like locking hands and getting people to follow your orders. And you can see instantly who the best subjects are because when you put them on stage and drop them into hypnosis, they'll do exactly what you say. Now, when we showed that video earlier of the woman going crazy with the masks, I can see the programming from the media, from her beliefs, from the way that she's been encouraged by people that all came out into doing something that she would never normally do. Because I have no doubt that this isn't the first time, that probably not the first time she's gone this bonkers uh, on, on live, but she's probably quite susceptible to losing it sometimes and just going with the flow. So it brings out some of the worst and the best of people. When I've done shows, I've found that armed forces are brilliant for doing hypnosis shows. Why? Because they're trained just to do stuff. So when you tell them to do stuff, they just do it and they jump as high as they can and they follow the, the rules. So why is this so vital? Why is it important? Well, I think to make this easier for everyone to understand, we need to show another video. And this video sort of brings you up to speed with what the phenomena of hypnosis is. Because once you understand this and able to know what's going on in your own head, then you can know how to deal with it and get the hypnosis and the programming you want that you actually will, will be able to create yourself. So if you have a look at the screens and watch this, it will explain everything. For a long time, hypnosis has been a popular point in the entertainment business. And while it is often described as a sleep-like trance state, it is expressed as a state characterized by focused attention, extreme suggestibility, and heightened imagination. It is most often compared to daydreaming, when you are fully conscious, but you tune out most of the distracting stimuli around you. One theory suggests that hypnosis is a way to access a person's subconscious mind directly. But what does this mean? Well, normally, you are aware of the thought process in your conscious mind, meaning that you consciously think over the problems that are right in front of you, thinking about where you left your keys or what color you should wear. This is how your conscious mind solves problems, by accessing information you need through your subconscious mind. What's interesting is your subconscious gets information without your awareness of its thought process, which is how you get new ideas out of the blue. But that's not all. Your subconscious also takes care of stuff you do automatically, from how you breathe to the way you look in the mirror when you drive a car. So in short, your subconscious mind is thinking behind the scenes. And during hypnosis, the subconscious mind is exposed directly to a hypnotist, which is why you feel freer and may be more expressive. Because the conscious mind is not filtering the information you take in, the hypnotist suggestions seem like they are coming directly from your subconscious, rather than from another person. And this theory has gained wide acceptance in the psychiatric community, mostly because it explains all the major characteristics of the hypnotic state. But others view the phenomenon simply as the placebo effect, due to social pressure and the influence of hypnotics, which is often strong enough to convince people that they should act in a certain way. And while our understanding of hypnosis has advanced a great deal in the past century, the phenomenon is still a mystery. Why is it that more people use hypnosis and actively are in charge of it? Well, you've got to go back about 100 years ago for a missionary called James Estale. He was a Scottish missionary working in, um, in India. 
and he's watching the religious swamis, the, the priests doing amazing things by putting people into trans states. And he came back to the me medical board and said, I've got this amazing thing of putting people into a trans state and you can do operations. And they said, well, do some more of that. Go and investigate more. And he said, well, no, I'm, you know, I'm here to spread the word of Christianity. I don't really want to do that. And at the time, they started using ether, you know, chloroform to be able to knock people out, to be able to do operations on them. And so if you had the wrong type of the amount of chloroform for a small person like me might kill me, but it might only just knock out somebody like Ernesto because we're quite different in height. So the modern pharmaceutical world was grown out of that decision that was made. If he hadn't made that decision and come back and worked on it, then we would have had a different shopping mall, not that we're going into shopping malls that much, where you'd have instead of pharmaceuticals, you'd have hypnotists. We'd all be used to doing it and we'd all be used to doing stuff for ourselves. And people will say, hypnosis, what's it all about, though? Let's go further back. It goes back 3,000 years and beyond to ancient Egypt, where they had houses of sleep, where they would put people into a trance state and be able to operate on them. So it goes way, way back. So for those with still a question mark about hypnosis, when we share with you what's coming up and the conditioning that's all around you, You'll understand now how the power, the family, the culture, the society, the news, the media, the things you've grown up with are all contributing to hypnotize you to get to the state you're in right now. But nothing gave you an excuse or a roadmap to how to get out of this situation right now. Does that make sense, Ernesto? Yeah, it does make sense. And this is this is uh, very linked to what I was mentioning earlier. I mean, we we got in we we got in. This was uh, uh, we were skewed into this into this situation, and now we do not know how to get out, and that's one of the reasons why people are so messed up. Absolutely. So now we're going to take a slightly different turn and have a look at the conditioning we have. We're going to talk about power, culture, and conditioning. Now, the simple question to everybody is: Have you ever experienced the fact that things happen and you buy into them without question? That's a phenomenon that many of us have because of, from a very early age, we just go, yes, 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 yes. And any person who's a salesperson will tell you, if you can get your client to say yes nine times, then the odds are they will find it really difficult to say no when it comes down to actually closing the deal and making the sale. So we're coded to do lots of different things. And it's all about ultimately chasing and creating power. We're, we're created and we're trained to be able to go down certain routes and respect things that happen around us, even if they're not particularly good for us. Now, we're going to illustrate this with a video all about power. How does power fit in? Well, if you don't have any, then that's what makes you scared. Here's a video to share that. Let's have a look. Power is something that we all strive to have, even if we don't publicly acknowledge that. Everyone wants to be the coolest guy in the room, the one to whom everyone else looks up to, the leader of the group or the team. Power doesn't necessarily mean you have to hold a certain position or be physically strong. Power is the ability to influence others or the environment around you. In fact, the most miserable feeling in life is when you feel powerless, when you can't influence anyone or anything, you feel absolutely useless. That's why we humans are naturally attracted to power, we want to be important. But the problem is that not many of us really understand how power works. Most of us even views power as something bad. It's the bad guys who seek power. As a good people, we should not strive to power. We should not even talk about it. But deep inside, each and every single of us wants more power. And that's why here in this video, let's understand how power works. Power is the game that we all play every day, exactly like the Game of Thrones. Regardless if you might be trying to be promoted, or you want to attract that girl, or you simply want to be the boss amongst your friends. All of that is a form of power. And if you pay close attention to it, you will realize that power is a game of appearances. The way you look and behave creates a perception in people's mind about who you are. If you appear power hungry, someone who is trying to take over, people will despise you and hate you for that. Everyone hates that one guy in the group who directly shows that he wants to be the boss, although that everyone else deep inside wants the same thing. That's why you have to appear fair and decent and indirectly increase your power. Although that we all believe that we humans are creatures of logic, we are in reality are creatures of emotions, and we can control other people by the way we make them feel. If you're dealing with someone who is above you, like your boss for example, always make him feel superior. 
The moment you display your talents or show your intelligence, you will make him feel jealous and insecure about his position and he will do everything to get rid of you or keep you in that low position and then you will be crying in the corner and complaining why he has been promoted instead of you, although that you are more intelligent and work harder. So in order to get more powerful, you must learn to master your emotions. Usually our emotions get in charge and because of that, we take the most horrible decisions. You should not take decisions based on how you feel, but rather observe the situation clearly to take the best possible solution. Just remember the times when you get angry. If it was because somebody insulted you, you started dreaming how you will kick his ass and this conflict will end with him asking for your forgiveness. Instead of dreaming of that happy ending, you must learn to not let anger take over you and work on calculating every step ahead of you. And that's how you will get what you want and that's the real power. Sometimes you might need to appear less intelligent to make those above you feel superior or speak less to make your words more valuable or dress in a certain way to give a different perception about yourself. The point isn't to start lying and deceiving people. The idea is that the world works in a certain way whether you like that or not. And if you want to be powerful, you have to play by these rules. Another problem is that there will always be people who don't give a damn about any moral principles and will do anything possible to get what they want. And if you don't understand the rules of power, you will be crushed in no time. And if you are interested in learning these rules, I highly recommend to read the book 48 Laws of Power by Robert Greene. So here's what I want to share. The education system, from when we're very small, we get conditioned to go all the way up to... to um, senior school, then university, and then on to get a job, all based on the fact that the more education we have, the more power we'll have, the less we have to work so hard, and the more rewards we'll get from a system that looks after us. But here's what the big challenge is. The education system that we have is now a bit out of whack, because you can work really hard, and now you can Google anything, so you don't necessarily have to learn parrot fashion like you and I used to learn Ernesto. And also, you can spend the rest of your life paying off debts. Now, why should you be in that situation? It's easier to control you from the very beginning. And it's hard to put your finger on who's to blame because it's just run like this for many, 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 many hundreds of years. Education was created to get the, the farmers into the factories. So it's created a system to see who can do their maths, who can do their English, the same kind of age, the same kind of um, ability. The best ones can go on. The worst ones just go back to the fields. And the system hasn't really altered that much since. Now, I know that you've got strong thoughts about education. And this is not, by the way, having a go at the educators. I really do feel for every teacher, every headmaster, every person that's out there, this is not having a go at you, but you've felt this as well. And we do in many businesses, the same as good policemen, turn around and say, well, you know, it's not all us. We're working as hard as we can to keep everybody safe. This is a thought that I've felt for a long time. You and I have talked about this many, many times, Ernesto. What are your thoughts yeah. on, on uh, education before we get um, Gary Vaynerchuk's thoughts? What do you think? I suffered uh, in my education. I mean, I am extremely an extremely right brain person, and they actually made me be in a very left brain um, environment. I mean, I, I identified myself with death point society and how important it is. And that's why uh, I decided to become a teacher. And I mean, my way of teaching has always been very unorthodox because I understand how you have to get to people's feelings. And uh, this is exactly what we have not had. And uh, right now, we are going through a reinvention of the educational system, not because it had to happen, but because, of course, we were forced into it. Um, and uh, we were mentioning on, on the previous episode about the moving finishing line. And this is another of those things which is actually creating a lot more of the anxiety. Because people said, well, you know, we're going to go 90 days maximum on this situation. Right now, we are over 100 seven or 108 days, whatever it is right now, and we're, we're going to continue. And uh, I, I believe that uh, even if the virus disappears, the world will never be the same again, because schools are going to be different. The way of teaching are going to be different, is going to be different. And whoever was teaching the way that they were teaching and the way that we have been affected uh, because of education 
are going to have to change. So this is this is just uh, something that I am very passionate about, and I feel very bad about it because you're right. I mean, one of the things that is affecting us right now is the, edu the, the way that we were educated. Absolutely. So remember, this is all part of the conditioning to ultimately show you why people are finding it so challenging and so helpless right now to deal with the pandemic. Now, we've already had some potty mouths on the show. We've got another potty mouth coming on, but he's a, an exceptionally smart one as well. Uh, Gary Vanacek talking about the education system. Let's have a look at this. The school system here, I'm not, I'm not sure about America, but it's, it's outdated. Do it's you, outdated globally. It's outdated globally. The internet made it outdated because information is a commodity and the school system was built on me memorization of information. Mm. Why do I have to do any math? I have a calculator on my iPhone that can give you any math. Yeah. I don't need to know anything. I can ask Siri and Alexa in two seconds, they'll give me the answer. You know, who cares about the periodic table when I can tell you what, like it just, it's so uncomfortably outdated globally because it's predicated on memorization of information in a world where we have information at our fingertip within a second for zero cost. Mm. The whole thing's dead. How do we fix it? Uh, it's the parents' responsibility. Mm. It's the parents' responsibility to not buy into the self-esteem wrapped up in your child going to a top university. We don't need to boil the ocean. Parents need to make sure their kids are happy. Mm. If, you just put, if we all collectively actually gave a crap about the happiness of our children, it would fix itself. Unfortunately, we care more about the judgment of our contemporaries about what our children are accomplishing more than caring about our children. This is an issue of modern day parenting and insecurity and keeping up with the Joneses, mm. not a school system problem. Caring what other people think. Too it is the devastation of our society. Yeah, because so many people watching this will be like, no, you need a university degree. You need to that to fall back on. What fall think? back on what? Yeah. Every company's not requiring a degree to get hired anyway. The greatest companies in the world, Amazon, Google, are no longer requiring degree anyway. Mm. So what are you falling back on? Now, you know, that's like saying you need to keep a horse on hand in case the car doesn't work. It's ludicrous. It is ludicrous. It is ludicrous. Yeah. And it's completely predicated on the framework that the parent grew up with and more importantly, the judgment that their parents are putting on them or how they want to keep up with everybody else. Mm -hmm. Because the people that they eat dinner with at the country club on Sunday night, their daughter's going to the big university and they want, it's just ludicrous. Mm -hmm. It is sad. I'm a byproduct of parents that were strong enough to not care about what other people thought, mm -hmm. which is why I'm happy. And I would like to use what the gift my parents gave to me as something that I communicate to the world, hopefully inspiring one parent to give that gift to their child. Yeah, yeah what do you say to that entrepreneur, that young entrepreneur? at school, hating school, wanting to leave school, but has to stay at school. What do you say to them? Anyway? Enjoy the vacation, because you're gonna work the rest of your life. Two, don't be a hypocrite. If you're such a tough guy or gal, stop taking mommy and daddy's money. If you're such an entrepreneur, go buy your own iPhone. Start practicing now. The quicker a child gets off a parent's payroll, the more likely they will be happy in life. I haven't seen this. Uh, I haven't seen this video, and I think it's uh, it's phenomenal. I mean, it is exactly as uh, as it is. I mean, it's it's like uh, yeah, we're gonna keep a we're gonna keep a horse just in case the car doesn't work. <laughs> But, it, but it's there, and again, I'm not blaming the educators, I'm not blaming the teachers and everybody who's working really hard, but what we've got now is a really strange phenomenon. And I heard a phrase today that I'm going to share with you, Ernesto, which explains what the economy is. It's a liquid economy now, where literally everything's moving up and down, it's flowing, it's falling into bits and so on. We've never had this before. We had straight lines, or at least with disruption, so you had to go over and find your own way. But literally, it's all over the place. What's your thoughts? Yeah, my thoughts is the following, coming back into what I was saying about conspiracy theories, and this is an important thing. Why is it that otherwise intelligent people believe in some really crazy stuff? Unfortunately, one of the challenges of the educational system is that they have imposed bullshit belief systems in our heads. And that's the whole thing. 
that's for me the thing that drives me absolutely crazy about the conditioning and about the the i mean you have been basically trained like a, a pavlov's dog and that's exactly what i have an issue with i was actually going to show the video of the pavlov's dogs today but we'll save that maybe for fast forward but you're absolutely right i mean uh every school report i had said dave is a disruptive influence if only he would stop talking and behave he might be able to get some better grades who cares? I get paid now to normally travel the world. I'm doing it online now. And I teach people how to be disruptive. And who do I teach? The top people in industries, ambassadors, millionaires, billionaires, success stories, CEOs. They all want to get now to say, how do I do this better? How do I talk to people? How can I be more effective? That's the stuff I went to school and they tried to beat it out of me. So let's get this down. We're talking about the indoctrination of young people. So from childhood, Right up until the age you're at now, they've got to do things a certain way. Now, what I want to do is we've already bashed education. I don't want to spend my time bashing education. That's not what I'm here for. I want to talk about the conditioning that leads to a problem where people feel helpless, lonely, and unable to deal with things. And what I want to do now is share something that Trevor Noah said on one of his brilliant monologues. He talked about the con he was talking about Black Lives Matter, and he was talking about the rioters. Because everyone says rioters are terrible, we've got to sort them out, how dare they, they're doing everything. And he said, let me give you a different idea. We grow up with a contract from society. And that contract says, if we work really hard, we can get from nowhere up to here. The society is geared to give us the best potential to be able to do it. It will protect us and keep us all safe. And apart from the fact that you know there's some little biases here and there, Anybody can get from where they are to where they need to be if they work really hard. What the society didn't say with the contract is that people enforcing it are going to be the ones that take you down and possibly kill you because of the color of your skin. Now, I'm not going to spend long on black lives at all. This is just what Trevor Noah was talking about in terms of the rioters. Let me put this in perspective. If your contract that says I will behave and work my way up to be able to buy the the bag or the car or the pair of shoes that I really want has been broken and you know you're not going to get it, what about the contract that says you should behave and respect distances and respect other people's boundaries and their material? I'm not saying you should commit crime, but this is at the heart of what that problem has been. And this is at the heart of the challenge that people are finding right now and they find themselves lost and alone, they were never told it was going to be like this. The contract said that the bosses would keep us safe and the politicians and everybody else would have an idea about what we had to do next. And clearly, that's not the case. How do you find that, Ernesto? Do you find that's about right for you as well? Yeah, 100%. Absolutely agree, totally. So therefore, you've got a situation where the riots break out, there's challenges everywhere, and the pandemic on top of it just makes the whole world seem like it's a complete mess. Now, it's actually a perfect storm of things going wrong all at the same time. It's not just the I, education. I have to the bubonic plague. <laughs> it's the bubonic plague as well. Yeah, those lumps under your arm are going to be such fun when they arrive. Um, you have to wear special masks there, there, and here. In fact, it would be like being a, st a stewardess. The masks are here, here, no. So with that... You've got a load of challenges and a load of problems that weren't there before. They've come together as a perfect storm. You can't go out the house. You can't get close to people. The things we got taught from a very early age conditioned us to be part of a system that's failing now across the world. It's not even that you can see a ray of sunshine. Everyone's being affected. Some, some worse than others. Agreed. But it, but it all comes down to one question. What's in it for me? What do I feel? So now what I want to do is ask you a question, and that's all about social distancing. How difficult have you found it to distance yourself from people? And have you found that you really don't trust getting close to people ever again? If that's the case, then I want to explain a few things about social distancing. You said you were with your neighbors yesterday, Ernesto, and you had this wonderful um, cookout and you watched the, the bonfire together. You do have a risk when you're sharing utensils and sharing food and all the rest of it. And you've really got to have faith that the other people are, are staying in lockdown to the same degree as you and are as safe as you. Correct. Correct. Yeah. But on so, the other hand, I mean, in, in the other hand, it is uh, it is uh, uh, measured 
uh, risk. This is something that I am willing to risk. What I am not willing to risk is going to a concert or going to the beach like uh, the picture that we were showing a little bit earlier on. Those are things that for me make absolutely no sense. And coming back once again to the whole uh, uh, the whole thing, it's it's about that certainty. Of course, I mean, you can have that faith that my neighbors were, were okay and they have actually disinfected the utensils. I also have the faith that uh, I'm going to go to Costco. And I prefer to go to Costco because I know that they are actually really taking this very seriously. I prefer to go to Starbucks because they don't let you go in unless you're wearing a mask. I mean, I am starting to see things in a completely different way. Now, the problem is all those people that, of course, that is an uncertain territory for them, which they're going to say, no, 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 no. I, 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 this is, they're taking away my liberty. This is against Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, please. I, you, I mean, this is exactly the situation. Or, or you know, those, those uh, uh, people that politicize the whole thing because they don't have that certainty. And that is exactly the issue. They are otherwise intelligent people that sometimes you see them arguing about these situations which are absolutely senseless. And that is because, of course, they're taking that certainty from them. Now, we're going to show a video in a, in a few moments' time, but here's a concept I want to throw at you that Ernesto and I have lived in this concept for many years, and anybody who's an entrepreneur has lived in it as well. I love uncertainty. I love being outside of my comfort zone. I love being in a discomfort zone because that means that every day I've got a new challenge, but I know that the, the odds are I'll be able to deal with it anyway. So that means I'm going to be more creative. It means I program my mind to notice around me things that are going to help me to get through these challenges. And so this situation we're in right now is just another huge, but another challenge. So what yeah. does that mean for people with their social distancing? Sorry, Nesta, do you want to say something then? Uh, you have mentioned it all the time. Every time that I share with you, I mean, because we have a, a time difference and I send you a, a video about something which is happening here uh, and, and I, go, I basically roll my, ass, my eyes up, your, your, your uh, answer, it's normally Darwin. <laughs> <laughs> that is exactly the whole point. So we're seeing all these people which are in tremendous pain. And of course, they are fighting there in social media. And you see them. And you know what? Instead of me attacking them, I see them. They are in pain. They are in self-inflicted pain because they just don't want to adapt. So if we just talk about Darwin, Darwin said that he was not going to be the most intelligent, that he was not going to be the strongest, but whoever was going to be able to survive in the future was going to be the one that will adapt themselves to the, to the new situation. Now, you quote Darwin to any of these people which are otherwise intelligent, and then they tell you, yeah, but that is the problem. You are under hypnosis because you should not be thinking about adapting you have to voice out your feelings. You have to voice out your way of thinking because if not, you are going to actually enslave in stages. <laughs> as, as crazy as that sounds, there's a lot to be said of the way to be able to deal with things. Emotional intelligence is ultimately all about not about saying I'm not going to do something, I'm not going to feel a certain way. It's understanding why you feel a certain way and whether that certain way is the one that you need to be able to move forward. So sometimes you acknowledge it and say, that's not going to help me. What will help me? And then you look at the situation of the person you're dealing with and you adapt to fit in with that. So there's nothing wrong with voicing your opinion. There's nothing wrong with thinking a certain way. But the big question is, is that going to help me? And what do I do with it next? So I say Darwin purely because the situation that's going to take care of everything, and I hate to say it's a terrible thing to happen, is if you do not pay attention to the world around you, when it changes, you will not be able to change with it. And right now, you really need to be able to change. So let's look at the challenge. Let's look at social distancing. We're going to have two back-to-back -back videos with a very short break in between as we explain and discuss what's happened. Okay, so this video is all about the mindset because we're going to get in now with showing you about the conditioning, about how social distancing affects you. Humans are social creatures, but to stop the spread of COVID-19, the novel coronavirus, we all need to do exactly what we're biologically programmed not to do, social distancing. We humans don't have big claws, sharp teeth, or hard shells. 
we've evolved to feel safe by sticking together. Therefore, few things are more alarming to our systems than suddenly being alone. Just like how, when we're deprived of food, we feel hungry. When we're deprived of social connections, we feel lonely. Loneliness, like hunger, is a warning signal reminding us that we're not meant to be alone and encouraging us to form deeper connections. If we can't form deep social connections because, say, we're social distancing due to a global pandemic, our bodies go into survival mode. We start producing more cortisol, a stress hormone that keeps us alert to threats. Our bodies experience more overall inflammation, a way to prepare to heal any injuries we might get while out on our own without help. And our sleep becomes shallower so we can wake up to dangers in the night. These survival responses help us get through short, threatening bursts of isolation. But the longer we're lonely, the more these changes wear on our cells and organs. That's why perpetually lonely people are at higher risk for mental, physical, and emotional problems and have weakened immune systems. So, we're stuck inside for the foreseeable future, and this creates its own unique problems. That's why we've created Closer Social Distancing, a YouTube video series and website designed to keep all of us happy, healthy, and more connected. Wow. It's the first time that I actually come across this, and I love the concept. And, you know, for the first time, I get to hear we are going to be like this for the foreseeable future. Once again, I think one of those things that we really need to get that clear is that uh, we are not going to think, I mean, not because not because the lockdown is over, Corona is, uh, I 100% believe that we are going to continue like this, and my take is 24 to 36 months. So this mental health issue, it's absolutely critical. And I love what uh, YouTube is doing with that channel. I think it's great. It's brilliant. And so rather than debate too much about it, let's show the second video of this series because it starts giving you ideas about how you can deal with it. We can't just leave it on a cliffhanger. Let's go straight into the second video to explain that. We learned in our last video, Your Brain on Social Distancing, that we're not built to be alone and that the longer we feel lonely, the more our bodies start to break down mentally, emotionally, and physically. Whether you're social distancing all by yourself or with a partner or family members, the COVID-19 pandemic has surely made your social interactions much fewer. Whatever your situation is, it's totally understandable to feel lonely. We feel it too. Here are three tactics to help you in the fight against loneliness. One, recognize your loneliness for what it is. Loneliness, like hunger or thirst, is a natural way for your body to tell you it needs something. Connection. You are not sensitive or weak. You're a human, a social creature. So take your feelings of loneliness seriously and objectively, just like you would for feelings of hunger or thirst. Two, be vulnerable with at least one person. Pick someone who you can confide in and who can confide in you. Connect regularly via video calls or over the phone. It can be scary to talk about your feelings, but you'll both find that it's a great remedy for loneliness. Three, be part of something bigger than yourself. Participating in greater society is critical for feeling connected. Thanks to technology, you can connect to something bigger without leaving your home. Consider finding a cause or nonprofit to follow and support. Lastly, we want you to know that you're not alone in your loneliness. In fact, this is one of the rare times in history that people all around the world, of all different cultures, languages, socioeconomic groups, are experiencing the same thing together. Yeah, I think it's uh, incredibly important. And I want to encourage everybody watching right now, I think especially the episodes that we're going to be having on this uh, series this week, that they should be uh, shared. Who else needs to listen to this message? And yes, of course, I mean, we are uh, talking about some, uh, some stuff that most people feel uncomfortable, but I think that's exactly what needs to happen. I mean, we want to make sure that we're there. It is, uh, it is just what it is. I mean, we have also felt the pain and the difficulty in our own lives, and we are all de living it in our own way. So uh, we are there with you. And we would love to hear your comments. We would love to hear how you feel, your experiences, and uh, try to provide you in every way that we can information that will actually help you go through this uh, period, which 
as we are saying, it's going to be <laughs> for the foreseeable future. Absolutely. That's why it's so important. When we talked about what we're going to do this week, we decided that what we'd do is just help people feeling lost, lonely, finding the challenges. Because you normally talk about your business, but what's the point in having a business that's successful if you don't feel comfortable inside it? One of the things that we've got from the whole experience is what really matters so much is not about the amount of money that you make if you can't go out and spend it. It's about, about your health, your happiness, your love, and your belief in things going better. Now, we're going to be sharing more with that in the future. We're going to, be, going to put this show kind of to bed. We're going to be coming back on Wednesday with the Toilet Paper Diaries Part 2, where it'll all be about solutions. It'll all be about programming yourself, your friends, reinventing yourself so your business can be better, uh, and also becoming more used to your own skills and tools. You already have everything you need to be more successful right now. You've got to start by asking better questions. If the, the coding and the words you use right now are ones that lead you to feel terrible and you notice how bad the world is and the news is awful, first thing to do, to do is switch off the news. Switch on stuff that you like. Put on your favorite music. Watch movies that take you away from it. Talk to people. Share ideas. Start your own TV show, and Esther and I will show you how to do that. Well, just uh, just a last recommendation also on my side, and I think this is what has helped me tremendously uh, see things. I mean, you ha there's, there's going to be two sides of the story uh, always. Right now, we're living in times of uncertainty, and uncertainty can really drive you wild. I mean, for us, we have, uh, we're very used to dealing with uncertainty, but possibly you are not. So my uh, uh, recommendation here on how to deal with uncertainty is take both sides. I mean, don't say, you know what, you are a masker and you're an anti-masker. You are a, demo a Democrat, you are a Republican. Both sides have a good uh, a good point. Don't just try to, fever uh, I mean, to feverishly try to defend your own point. Try to understand what other people are feeling, because right now, understanding is absolutely critical. Everybody's dealing with this situation in a different way. Don't just say, well, you know what, I think it's right. Because we are in a, in, a, in a situation of change. And if you keep on saying to yourself, well, you know, I am right. And you're behaving like the Karen in Target, just throwing away all this because, of course, it's wrong. And we have, all, we have gone to the end of the way. That just doesn't work. If I believe that wearing a mask is fine for me and the way to respect my, uh, my other human beings is that, be respectful. If you don't want to wear a mask, fine. Buy yourself a visor. But just show respect. That is just the most important thing. We have to start seeing the world in two different ways. Each of us is dealing with this situation in a complete different way. And that is basically what I recommend for all of you, because, of course, we're living in times of uncertainty. Absolutely. I couldn't put it better myself. The thing is, we'll be sharing with you how you recondition yourself, how you change the programming you've had to this date, how you can make your world into a castle, and also how you can move forward and create a world around you that you really enjoy being in as to the one that you've been thrust on top of and uh, in the center of, and you maybe don't find anything in it that you like. Uh, we're going to leave in a moment. I'm going to share with you a video about the brand new you, one of my hypnosis audios I'm going to share with you. And uh, make sure you share this. You subscribe to uh, our channel. Make sure that you join the Fast Forward show which is going to be on Thursday because I'll teach you how to hypnotize yourself and others on that show. But tomorrow on Wednesday, it's all about the conditioning and how to alter the conditioning and create the world that you really want to be in. You can see there right in front. There you go. Facebook.com backslash groups backslash fast forward show. In there, we always have a deep dive into all the stuff we talk about, but we do it in practical terms that allows you to come out of it with a roadmap and a workbook. Make sure you're part of that. Okay. Meanwhile, we're going to see you soon. Have a wonderful evening or morning or afternoon, wherever you are in the world. And you're never alone. We're thinking of you here at the Toilet Paper Diaries. My name is Dave Crane. We've never had a time where so many people feel so lonely, so isolated, so helpless, and so scared. Worried about their jobs, worried about their future, worried about their family, worried about their health. That's why. I've created this audio. As a hypnotherapist, I've helped many, many people to create success in their business life, in their personal life, and in their emotional stability. Imagine being able to talk to the very best of you in the past, the most successful version of you, 
and getting them to advise you on how you need to move forward. And being able to talk to a future version of you who's already lived through this and had the success that you could have dreamed of. Who's telling you what they did next. This audio is designed to give you both of them as your mentors and to help you create a brand new you. Enjoy and please share with those who you know need it as well. My name is Dave Crane.